Hi everyone and welcome to another video. If you're following me on Instagram, you may know that I am participating in FIFA's Fangiri Art Challenge. It's a challenge where you turn mushrooms into characters. I didn't want to put too much pressure on myself, so I'm only doing one mushroom character for each week. And I still managed to be late, because this one is actually for a prompt of last week. I thought that this would be the perfect chance to create another art video and also practice illustration and painting with watercolors at the same time. I picked the fly agaric as my prompt for this week and turned it into this little witch who's trying to make a potion. I initially wanted to give her a cat as her familiar, but I could not ignore that these mushrooms are also called toadstools and so I went for the most obvious option instead. All in all, the illustration turned out a little bit stiff in my opinion but I still kind of like it enough to share the rest of my process with you. Since I'm trying to experiment more with my art and my YouTube content, I'm attempting watercolors without any idea what I'm doing, to be honest. I thought that when I start with very light layers and build it up very slowly, nothing can go wrong, right? Well, of course it wasn't as easy as I expected. And I also underestimated the inconveniences of my filming setup again. I thought that after two years of filming, I would be used to it. But in reality, creating art is a lot harder with a massive ring light or tripod in front of my head. And I once again realized how close I actually get to the piece when I'm drawing for myself. So if there are any other art content creators here who have any advice how to make filming or my filming setup more convenient, please let me know. It seems I got used to it for bullet journaling but pieces like this one are way more detailed and feel completely different. Also, the weather was very weird that day again and messed up the lighting completely and I really hope it doesn't bother you too much but filming the process was a really spontaneous decision so this whole video is not very well planned. Also, as you can see, I'm painting in my sketchbook. The reason I'm telling you this is that this is a mixed media sketchbook, which can take watercolors pretty well, but after adding more and more layers of very wet watercolor, I realized that it actually does some damage to the paper. If that wasn't the case, I would have probably gone a lot darker with this illustration than I actually did, but to focus more on the positive, I now know this for the next time I want to attempt a watercolor illustration and will get some watercolor paper beforehand.
So in the end I was too afraid to add even more layers because I didn't want to ruin the page and decided to add details with dry mediums instead, which is, to be honest, a lot more convenient for me anyway. And I think that this is everything I have to say about this piece. But since I want to improve my voiceovers, I am of course prepared and asked my Instagram followers for stuff to talk about or questions to answer. So let's get to the Q&A part of the video. The first question is, when did you start sharing your art with the world? I started posting on Instagram in June 2019 and my account was meant to be a place where I can showcase little illustrations but I didn't draw very regularly back then, so I mostly posted my bullet journal pages and my account became a bullet journal account eventually. This wasn't initially intended and I'm still trying to find the balance between art and bullet journal content on my social media platforms. When did you start bullet journaling and why? I started bullet journaling in October 2018 and I randomly found a blog post about it and immediately got excited because I always had a weakness for planners and I love art. So I did more research, I found Amanda on YouTube and so the journey began. What are your go-to bullet journal themes? I actually try to avoid having repetitive themes, but I'm totally guilty of putting stars and sparkles everywhere. I pick any black and white theme, draw stars and constellations on the black parts with a white gel pen and it will turn out pretty eventually. I also feel a strong urge to do these kinds of themes from time to time. Where do you gather inspiration from? This is actually kind of hard to answer because most of the times inspiration comes to me very randomly and out of nowhere or from my environment. This is usually where my best ideas come from. But if it doesn't happen like this, uh, there's of course a lot of media I consume that inspires me like other artists videos or even anime or video games. In that case, it's often just a small detail that catches my eye. Some people ask me if I ever get art block and if I have any advice how to overcome it. I think that could actually be a topic of a whole video, so let me know if you would be interested in that. But what I usually do if I don't have any inspiration is to study fundamentals like anatomy for example, or I just do fan art. It's always fun and doesn't require any brain power. Or I just ask other people what I should draw, or look up drawing prompts, draw this in your style, or stuff like that. And in the case that I have ideas but can't execute them as I imagined or feel like I can't draw. I just don't draw for a while because I noticed for myself that this only frustrates me and doesn't really help when I still force myself to draw. How do you follow your schedule? That's what my bullet journal is essential for. 
It actually helps me a lot to write down my to-do list every single day. I function a lot better when I have a plan. That doesn't mean that this always works. I'm naturally a very chaotic person and have to really focus on what I have to do. And I also get sidetracked very easily. So yeah, it's not always that easy. How do you get motivated? I can be a very ambitious person when I really want something. So thinking about the purpose or goal of doing something often helps me to get started. Do you have any tips for growing an Instagram account? I actually don't think that I'm the right person to ask this at the moment. Um, because of the latest changes of the algorithm, I'm losing followers almost every day. And I think I was very lucky and had a great start three years ago when it was a photo sharing platform. But I think now the algorithm prefers reels and other video content over photos. That's actually not the content I'm sharing on Instagram, so I can't really tell. What used to work for me before was posting regularly, um, building and engaging with your community and other artists, support each other, try to be active on your stories. This is something I still struggle with, to be honest. But the most important thing is do what you love and enjoy and not what people expect from you. It's the best way to stay motivated when the numbers are low because it was still fun for you. This is something which is becoming more and more important to me. I know this is not really helpful at all, but it's the lessons I've learned while being active on Instagram. How do you choose your monthly themes? It's similar to how I get inspired. It usually comes to my mind very randomly and if it doesn't, I always keep a list in my bullet journal with themes I want to attempt in the future. So if I can't think of a new theme, I just refer to the list. How did you start creating? I always loved to draw as a kid. In primary school, my best friend and I were huge fans of the Lion King and he started drawing from paused frames and it looked great. I was completely amazed and have never thought that it's possible to recreate pictures from movies. I don't remember how it really looked, but as a seven year old, it was incredible. He told me that I can do it too and so I tried it and it didn't turn out too bad. And from that moment on I started drawing more or less seriously and that sounds very cheesy but I'm still grateful that he encouraged me to try it. How do you decide on a color palette for your themes? It kinda comes with the theme. If I have a theme in mind, I start to test and swatch colors that would match the theme until I find a combination I like. I also try to use as few colors as possible 
because I usually prefer monochromatic themes over very colorful themes, but it doesn't always work out. What are your favorite art supplies and what would you like to use more often? I usually prefer dry mediums over paints and my current favorite for sketching are ballpoint pens because they really help me to accept mistakes and they leave no room for overthinking. I would like to get into painting a little bit more though. It has something calming and therapeutic to it. I especially want to learn gouache and watercolor painting and I'd also like to try out acrylic inks in the future. For coloring I currently prefer alcohol-based markers, but I still wouldn't say that I'm good at blending. What would be your witchy aesthetic and does your star sign fit you and why? Okay, so this one needed a little bit of research because I neither know a lot about witchy aesthetics nor am I into astrology that much, but both was quite interesting to read about. Regarding the first part of the question, I really like the green witch aesthetic but everything green I take care of dies, so this is not really an option for me. Nevertheless, I identify with their close relationship to nature and I love animals, so if you know an aesthetic that would fit me, let me know. And regarding the second part of your question, I am a Virgo and in my opinion that sounds so boring, but I read through a few stereotypical traits of Virgos and I have to admit that they are at least 90% true. What are your hobbies? My hobbies are basically just doing art playing video games and watching anime and there's currently not really a lot of room for more. I like reading and working out too but I don't do it very often to be honest. I also learned playing the electric guitar and took dancing lessons which was a lot of fun too. And these were already all the questions for now. Let me know if you like this Q&A kind of video and feel free to ask more questions, which I can answer in my next one. I also hope you enjoyed my little mushroom witch illustration as well. If you're still watching, comment a mushroom emoji and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel if you didn't do that yet. Thank you so, so much for watching and have a wonderful rest of your day.